It was the little radio station that could and did. Cleveland's Wixie 1260 became a powerhouse in the 60s and 70s, at one point owning 50% of the listening audience. How did this AM station hit that record? Michael Shevsky is here to spin the tale. Mike is the author of Wixie 1260, Pixies, Six Packs, and Supermen. Welcome. Well, thank you very much, and congratulations. 600 shows is pretty impressive. Uh, we're so. real happy about that. There you go. So tell me, why did Wixie actually take off? You know, what was going on then? You know, it's funny, because when we started this project, uh, Rich Berg, who's a local uh, historian, media historian, a great one, one of the best in the country, as a matter of fact, and Carlo Wolf, uh, who edited the book and who's a pop culture historian in his own right, uh, we kind of got together and we thought, what made this station so important? Well, it was a harmonic convergence of a lot of things. There was some wonderful music, but at the same time, great personalities on the air, and three visionaries. You had Joe Zingali, Bob Weiss, and Norm Wayne, and they knew how to promote, they knew how to sell, and put them all together, and you've got a winner. Oh, well, what are some of the personalities and promotions that happen? Well, you know, one thing, it's, it's important you bring up about promotions, because quite honestly, Wixie was also a very visual radio station. They didn't do a lot of TV advertising, none that I can think of, but they always sent their jocks out into the, the public to talk and to let themselves be known. For example, the Wixie truck that you see here was often at Southgate. I grew up in Bedford Heights and I thought it was there so often that the thing just broke down there or something. But the jocks <laughs> were always out there and they were always out talking to people and shaking hands. Larry Morrow used to call people up on the phone and say, would you listen to me? Give me a listen. <laughs> and guess what? Larry Morrow became the number one disc jockey in, in Cleveland. Yeah. How about Chicken Man? Chicken Man. Well, you know, once again, there's Larry as Chicken Man. But Chicken Man was sort of a parody of uh, the Batman series that was so popular. I remember that was sort of like the, that whole pop culture craze in the mid-60s. They ran that once an hour, and it was just a huge, uh, a huge promotion for Wixie. All right. How about... Um the stars, rock stars oh boy, at the, the time, stars. or pop stars. Yeah, many of them on the way up. You know, a lot of people forget that Wixie actually promoted the Beatles at Cleveland Stadium. Dick Wildchild Kemp there talking with, uh, well, that's Davy Jones of the Monkees. Mm -hmm. you, when you came to Cleveland, you either went on the air at Wixie or you were on the stage for Wixie, but Wixie was on your agenda. All right. Brought all the big names into town and Boy, onto did the they air. So. Yeah. And a lot of good people. You know, and once again, the promotions, like, uh, for example, in uh, this photo, you see all the promotion, uh, promotional letters that came in looking for tickets to various shows. I mean, it was absolutely wonderful. And that's probably uh, one or two days mail. That's amazing. Somebody yeah. had to sit there and open all of that. Well, I'm sure the Postal <laughs> Union wasn't too happy about it. You know, Neil Diamond made some very early appearances at uh, the Appreciation Days at Geauga Lake and Euclid Beach and things like that. But Neil Diamond would just sit around. Nobody knew who he was. Then they went on stage. They knew him after that. Okay. Oh, and who is that? Oh, that's one of the Beach Boys there. What an amazing group. And, uh, you know, the Beach Boys would come to Cleveland, and they just couldn't understand. Why were people singing along with our songs? This is surf music. But Wixie just promoted the Beach Boys, and they promoted everything. They promoted Motown, country, uh, blues. You would have Dean Martin followed by Led Zeppelin, oh, and followed by Johnny Cash. And that was just a typical day on the air. And I know Wixie took you know, its turn at the top, and then it sure turned did. into FM. And next week, I, you're going to be back with talking about WMMS. If you'll have me, sure. <laughs> well, we want to hear about it. It sounds <laughs> right. like great information. This is all sounds really good. very interesting. So Mike's book will bring back the fun and crazy days when Wixie ruled the airwaves. My thanks to Mike for stepping up to our microphone to share these memories. To find out more, call Kent State University Press at 330-672-7913 or log on to www.kentstateuniversitypress.com. Next, how to become fee-free.